Well, let's begin by setting the stage. It is a bloody stage indeed. It is a stage that has seen the slaughter of 60 million human children since Roe v. Wade. 60 million. Why do some of us find this slaughter to be unthinkable and an injustice? Well, because every single one of those 60 million were innocent and defenseless human beings. And it is always wrong, always wrong, to directly and intentionally kill innocent and defenseless human beings. It's as simple as that. You know, our position is very straightforward. That's our whole position. I just summed it up. Are you killing an innocent and defenseless human being? Then it's wrong. That's it. The pro-abortion person here will respond uh, with, a, with a few different moves. The first is to try to dehumanize the unborn, of course. He'll claim that the unborn child is not a human person and thus does not have the same moral standing and cannot make the same moral claims for itself that a, quote, real person can make. Now, the idea that an unborn child isn't human, which is something that you do hear from pro-aborts, even supposedly educated ones, is such a silly, absurd, anti-scientific notion that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. It's simply a scientific fact that the being in the womb is indeed a being, a living being, and it is a member of the human species. Now, we know that because all living things have to be a member of some species or another. If an unborn child isn't human, then what species is it? Now, oftentimes what you'll hear is, oh, it's not a human, it's a fetus. Well, that's like saying it's not a human, it's a boomer, okay? This is what maybe kind of works sometimes, but uh, this is a stage of human development. Now, as for living, is it living? Well, there are only three states of being that a physical entity can be. And I think this holds true for the most part, except maybe at the quantum level. That would be most things are either alive, dead, or inanimate. Now, is the unborn baby inanimate? No, inanimate objects don't grow, they don't develop, they don't move on their own, they don't consume food. You know, this podium right here is inanimate, it will never be anything other than this, it will decay and fall apart, you could cut it into pieces and build it into something else, but it's never on its own going to grow into something else, because it's inanimate. Um, is the unborn child dead? Well, no, we know it's not dead, because if it was dead, then we wouldn't need the abortion. So that leaves only living. Okay, so the baby is a living human. We've established that. We've settled that argument already. That's good. What about person, though? Well, this is a little bit more interesting because the pro-abortion individual, if he has any degree of sophistication, will probably concede that a, quote, fetus, or undocumented infant, as I like to call them, he'll concede that it's a living human, but he'll say, okay, fine, it's a living human. You're right about that, but it's not a person. And he'll say that it's not a person because it's still developing and it is entirely dependent on its mother for survival. And this, he will say, means that it lacks moral standing. But this view that personhood is acquired by degree and that it's forfeit if you are entirely dependent on someone else for survival clearly implicates more than just the unborn. It would seem that the sick, the infirm, the disabled, the elderly would all get caught up in this net. If we're not willing to do that, if we're not willing to look at an infant child at, let's say, three months out of the womb, or an elderly person in a nursing home, or a disabled person in a wheelchair, if we're not willing to look at them and say that, well, you're kind of not as much of a person as me, you're a little bit less people-y than me, if we're not willing to do that, if we're not willing to say that personhood is attained by degree contingent upon factors like self-sufficiency, then we are left with this idea that personhood is inherent, and all of its attending moral rights and dignities are inherent. Inherent means existing in something as a permanent, essential, and characteristic attribute of that thing. If something is inherent, that means that it belongs to the essential nature of that thing. The idea that our human dignity, our human rights are inherent, our personhood is inherent, this is an idea that lies very much at the, at the foundation of our, of, our, um, of our country. In fact, any notion of human rights depends on this idea. But, and this is just a logical conclusion, if an unborn baby does not have inherent value, then human value itself is not permanent or essential, and thus, if an unborn baby does not have inherent value, then neither does anybody in this room. That's the thing about inherent value. You cannot gain it. 
That's why it's inherent. You either have it or you don't. 